Our ocean is dying and we are killing it. But we can still save it. In this video, I will introduce you to the Startups for Ocean project. How startups will help us save our ocean. I will tell you about who I am, what is Startups for Ocean, why Startups for Ocean, why now, and how you can get involved. Our ocean is dying, and we are killing it. It sounds like an exaggeration to attract attention, but it's not. We have been depleting the ocean for years, and many species have disappeared or are on the verge of disappearing soon. Think of the big whales. Moby Dick was an epic novel, talking about epic challenges. Yet in reality, we have been killing too many whales for too long. We have been destroying the ocean floor for long with industrial trawler fishing, transforming healthy underwater ecosystems into inhospitable deserts. We have dramatically increased the level of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere with a corresponding increase in ocean acidity, thus destroying the delicate equilibrium of important ecosystems like the coral reefs, which cover just a little percentage of the ocean floor, yet are home to 25% of the entire ocean fauna. Greenhouse gases and global warming have also a huge effect on polar ice caps, having melted most of the Arctic and consistently reducing the glaciers in Antarctica, with enormous potential increase of the ocean water level threatening the lives of millions of people in coastal areas. We are treating the ocean like a giant garbage bin, le bidon bleu, as they used to say on oil rigs, throwing millions of tons of plastic which is now taking the toll by killing marine animals and entering the food chain as microplastics, which end up in our plates and bellies. And not only plastics, but oil spills that destroy coastal ecosystems and take years to be absorbed. Our ocean is dying and we are killing it. What can we do to stop the disaster and reverse the trend? What sort of innovation is needed? Is it just about new technologies or is it also about new business models? Sure, we need to find technological solutions to address the most pressing issues, but we need to also explore new business models. See what Brand Smith did with Greenwave. He changed his profession from fishing to harvesting the ocean, from hunter to farmer, and he created Greenwave, a new wave of harvesting from the ocean using 3D ocean farming. Brand single-handedly decided to change the business model so that all the business ecosystem could benefit from the new activity, not just a few business players in a predominant position. In his case, a strong vision combined with an entrepreneurial mindset brought about a massive change and showed a possible solution to pressing issues. Entrepreneurship is the key to change and innovation, both technological and business model innovation. Combining ocean issues and entrepreneurial solutions is the aim of Startups for Ocean. Let me tell you more about Startups for Ocean, starting from who I am. I have been working with startups since 2010, and in 2017 I created Startup Wharf, the first and only global hub of startup-driven maritime innovation. Startups are the lifeblood of innovation, and now I want to replicate the success of Startup Wharf for ocean sustainability. That's how the idea of Startups for Ocean was born. Yes, I want to replicate Startup Wars model, yet I want to make it much better. Startups for Ocean is the global virtual hub of startup-driven ocean sustainability. We attract and support startups and scale-ups active in ocean sustainability in all of its facets, from aquaculture and fisheries to renewable energy, from ocean preservation to ocean cleanup and so on. Startups for Ocean gives visibility to all startups in ocean sustainability, from any place in the world, to the relevant stakeholders interested in sustainable innovation and business transformation, including innovation hubs, true CSR companies, associations, investors, and ocean sustainability enthusiasts. Startups for Ocean creates opportunities to connect and develop new businesses with a clear ocean sustainability agenda. Why do I want to replicate Startup Wharf for ocean sustainability? Is it just a business proposition for me? 
Not really. I'm a naval architect and come from four generations of seafarers. I learned to swim almost before learning to walk and later I learned free diving and I really loved it. I learned to sail as a child and I remained a passionate sailor. You can find me sailing on the Thames with my streaker dinghy. I'm the membership secretary of the Contessa 32 class association and I often sail in the Solent on some friends Contessa. In the past I did some ocean sailing and I plan to sail to Iceland and back as a challenge supporting ocean sustainability charities. But this is another story. I love the ocean and I feel sad for what we are doing to it and its creatures. I'm aware of the impact our growing world population and economic development have on the ocean's health and in turn on our chances of surviving the impending catastrophe. But it's not just a matter of protecting the ocean as much as of developing our economy and its sustainable growth using innovative technologies and business models. And startups are the best response to these challenges. They say the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago and the second best is now. We could rephrase it for the ocean. As if 20 years ago, we were not yet aware of what we were doing to our ocean? Actually, even 50, 50 years ago, we were already aware of the negative ecological impact of many of our activities. Let me tell you a story within a story. I'm an avid reader of sailing books, and the sailor that I most admire is Bernard Moitessier, a man who loved the ocean above everything else. He was part of that group of crazy men who in 1968 set off to circumnavigate the globe solo and non-stop. After rounding Cape Horn and with a serious chance to compete for the podium, he instead decided to abandon the race and kept sailing east, round the Good Hope again and over to Australia to finally reach his paradise in Tahiti a few months later. In his diary, he speaks sadly about what humanity was doing to the ocean at that time and refers to a book by Jean Dorst, Before Nature Dies. That book was published in 1965. Yet at that time we didn't want to listen and we kept accelerating consumption and pollution at an incredible rate till today. Sure, someone could say that the ocean managed to survive after all, so Jean Dorst's cry was excessive and premature. Well, maybe, but now it is clear that we have reached the tipping point. Now it is really the last chance we have to hope to revert the dramatic changes that we have forced on our oceans. By further coincidence, two positive things have developed while we were intent on destroying the ocean. It's one, powerful new technologies and two, the lean startup process. New technologies spawning artificial intelligence and machine learning, communications, energy storage, biotech, internet of things, augmented reality and you name it. These technologies make possible things that would have been unthinkable of just a decade ago or less. And the Lean Startup process developed in the early 2000s. It is the fastest way to test, validate and develop innovative ideas, both products and business models. So there's really no better time to accelerate the impact of startups on ocean sustainability than now. First of all, if you are a startup, you can register for free with the link above and in the description below. But it's not only for startups and scale-ups. As I said, I want to replicate Startup Wharf's model, yet I want to make it much, much better. Startup Wharf was a solo business. For me, it has been a test and validation of what can be done to support startups globally and ethically. But its growth suffered from being a solo enterprise. Startups for Ocean is going to be a collaborative effort of people and organizations like you who have ocean sustainability close to their heart. In the few weeks since I launched the idea publicly, many of my connections in ocean and maritime have expressed interest in getting involved in the development of Startups for Ocean. And you are invited as well to collaborate in any way you can. Here's how I want to develop Startups for Ocean and what support is needed. 1. Advisors. I want to create an informal group of advisors to help me shape the organization, define its structure and legal status, as well as specify clearly its objectives. Is it a not-for-profit or a big corp or an association or what else? How does it give startups exposure? 
by periodic publications in a directory like Startup Wharf does, or by organi organizing events or educational programs, or what else. If you are an independent organization or prominent voice in ocean sustainability, just let me know that you want to contribute as an advisor, and because I want really to talk to you. Two, co-founders. Startups for Ocean is not going to be a solo enterprise. I need the best and the brightest to join as co-founders. If you are passionate about the ocean, with an entrepreneurial spirit and a specific ability in organization, business development, online product management, marketing, finance, you name it, let me know. I want to form a stellar team to launch and run Startups for Ocean. Three, partners. I want to create a network of partner organizations working for a sustainable ocean and supporting ocean startups. Typically, startups incubators and accelerators, which are inherently global or geographically focused and might greatly benefit from being part of a global network connecting organizations and startups. But to give visibility to their own startups and to identify interesting startups outside of their specific geographic scope. And of course, organizations working for a sustainable ocean, like the many charities and fundraisers for projects supporting local communities. If your organization is involved with ocean sustainability and or ocean startups, just let me know and join in. Four, founders. Startup Wharf has been an experiment from a solopreneur who decided to bootstrap it. Now that the concept has been validated, it's time to think bigger. That's why Startups for Ocean will need funding. Depending on its legal status, we might need slightly different types of funders. VC funds, investors, philanthropists, donors. But if we know now who are the most interested, we will be able to shape the organization around them. And of course, please let me know if you are interested also in investing in ocean startups. Now, any category you fall in, and even if you don't fall neatly in any of the ones I mentioned, I invite you to register your interest and tell me if and how you want to contribute. Share this video with your network and let them know that startups are going to be a big part of the solution. If you're a startup, scale-up, or innovator in ocean sustainability, register to Startups for Ocean with the link above or in the description below. If you're an institution, a company, an investor, or any other person or organization interested in ocean sustainability, register with this link instead or in the description below. You can take the lead and decide to support us as an advisor, co-founder, community member, donor, or investor. You're also welcome if you want to take a more passive stance and contribute at a later stage. But in any case, I really look forward to counting you in. Thank you.